Energizer. And you can find out more about me and my team at thesalesenergizer.net. So we're on a series of trainings here uh, for cold reading, which we found is very appropriate to the sales process because, heck, that's what we're doing anyway. And we're up to the part where we're talking about um, observing characteristics like gender, age, ethnicity, things like that, so that you can relate to a person and keep building that rapport with them. Ask them, where did they get that tattoo? Or, oh my gosh, I never noticed that scar on your arm before. Where did you get that from? Um, oh, you know, why is your walls pink? <laughs> Whatever it is that you need to ask people to find out more about them, do so. And it doesn't always have to be business related. Obviously, there's two personality types that like to be talking about things other than business, even in a business environment. And then from there you make deductions. Um, maybe you're talking to a man and you're not at his house and you're in um, a, his office or at Starbucks and you notice he's got no wedding ring but he still has the um, tan line showing that he used to have one. So obviously he's recently uh, broken up. And so there's some place that you can have somebody relate and get them to get to that emotional place because buying is an emotional decision. And then we base that and we continue buying and when we start substantiating our emotion with the facts that we choose to listen to, believe in, and buy into. So you make deductions. Affluence can be figured out by clothing or the way they speak, um, the type of vocabulary that they use. It's not always true, but you know everybody pe pegs me because I'm the New Yorker, which brings us to pigeonholing and focusing. So everybody knows I'm a New Yorker, obviously, when I speak. And so they go straight to there. And so there's a place where they reach out to me, wanting to get to know me better. Well, I can't believe I get this question asked, and it's more often than not, have you ever been mugged? <laughs> That's like asking anybody from Texas if they own a horse. I mean, come on, some people do, some people don't. But... Those are the things that people can relate to me on and want to relate to me and know more about me, which is great because that's where that mirroring imaging comes from with that pigeonholing. You pigeonhole them, they pigeonhole you, and then you, you relate. So even um, a fundamentalist can get along with an atheist if you find that place where you both... There, there is some place where you overlap in your, in your life and your understandings and your perceptions. And pigeonholing will help you do that. And then you use, I love this one, use Barnum statements. So for years, I'm old. P.T. Barnum is the one who quoted, there's a sucker born every minute. Guess what I just found out? He did not. <laughs> He's being accredited for saying that, but he never did say that. He's he was famous for saying, we've got something for everyone. And especially if you're in a business to consumer type uh, service or product. Term, uh, exterminators, real estate agents, mortgage brokers. You've got something for everyone. That should be like the first thing out of your mouth. Because typically, when you're dealing with a business to consumer item, you're dealing with at least two people. It's usually at least the parents and then sometimes even the kids or whomever else is living under that roof has to take part in that decision. And so that makes everybody go, awesome. And so everybody just said, awesome, and they just bought into you. So go get them. <laughs>